The one thing this movie needed was a little bit of Terry Funk and a dash of Sam Elliott. Here are my immediate thoughts on Roadhouse 2024. Roadhouse is the new action film released through Amazon MGM and is directed by Doug Liman and stars Jake Gyllenhaal, who plays ex-UFC fighter Dalton that takes a job as a bouncer at a Florida Keys roadhouse, only to discover that his paradise is not all it seems. Now, I'm a big fan of the 1989 Roadhouse. This is one of those movies that played on cable seemingly every week when I was growing up. And I was honestly a little apprehensive when I first saw the trailer for the 2024 remake because there were elements of the 1989 film that were missing. The setting has changed from Missouri to Florida. Gone is the double deuce. And in is the road house? No, seriously. The Roadhouse in this movie is literally called The Roadhouse. And even a character points that out. And there are little moments of comedy that actually kind of works. Like, for example, the boat that Jake Gyllenhaal sleeps in is called The Boat. Yeah, did I say this was a comedy? But I have to say, I was impressed by this film. This is one of those remakes that stands on its own and does its own thing, and I believe because of that, it can actually coexist with the 1989 original Roadhouse. Sort of like how we have two great True Grit movies, or two fantastic West Side stories. So let's start with the performances. Jake Gyllenhaal got himself super shredded and ripped for this role of this ex-UFC fighter, and how he plays off this physically imposing yet charming character is actually really well done. He's really charming, like I said, and super dangerous. And just like in the 1989 film, this Dalton has done something horrendous and violent, and that makes him want to just really stay to himself and just not be around anyone in the outside world. And Jake Gyllenhaal plays that off really, really well. And despite his mysterious past, we actually come to like Dalton. He's a very charming person. He has a crazy code of honor. He's super friendly before he kicks someone's ass. He asks them if, you know, they have insurance. They want it. He wants to make sure that there's a hospital nearby and everything like that. So Jake Gyllenhaal carries this entire movie on his back. And if he played Dalton as a horrible character or if he was just badly acted or anything, this movie would fall apart. But thankfully, Jake Gyllenhaal is up for the task and he does a really admirable job. Jessica Williams plays Frankie, the owner of the Roadhouse, and she does an okay job with the role. She's pretty much the catalyst, offering Dalton a hefty sum of cash to be the bouncer of this bar. And yeah, it's a pretty good role. She's not knocking it out of the park, but you can tell she's having a great time with the role. Billy Magnuson is basically playing Billy Magnuson as the whiny mob boss who wants to build a resort. And the reason why there's all this drama is because the roadhouse is really the last holdout. And so he can't build this resort without getting rid of the roadhouse, which really you could. You could just build around that. So why don't you just do that? Daniela Melikor plays Ellie, the love interest in the film. And I'm going to be honest with you. I never felt the romantic subplot in the 1989 Roadhouse, and I feel it even less here. It's not that Daniela Melikor and Jake Gyllenhaal don't have chemistry, they do. But the character in itself is sort of unnecessary, with the exception of one specific incident that really could have been exchanged with another character, and it would have made a little bit more sense. This character really could have been erased, and it wouldn't have affected the plot at all. Arturo Castro is one of the funnier characters in the film as one of the henchmen that is just way too nice and way too polite to be in this gang. Hannah Love Lanier is really good as Charlie, the young girl that befriends Jake Gyllenhaal and she and her father runs the bookstore 
in town. And she even points out to Jake Gyllenhaal that basically what's happening is the plot of a Western. And Roadhouse basically is a Western or a samurai film. So it was funny that she pointed it out, but I really did like her. And I did enjoy the chemistry between her and Jake Gyllenhaal. Now we do need to talk about the Ireland sized elephant in the room and that is Conor McGregor and woof yeah this guy just cannot act and when he appeared in the movie I just started rolling my eyes because he is just a black hole of suck. And he was just playing one of those henchmen that tried to be way too cool for school and it just didn't work. But hey, at least he can fight. And that's another one of the great things about this Roadhouse that I really enjoyed. The fights in this movie are a lot of fun. For example, the very first fight that we all saw in the trailer where Dalton is just slapping the shit out of people is tremendous. And I really appreciated how Doug Lyman used his camera to sell the violence in this movie. There are lots of children of men shots where we get the single take panoramic sequences that make you feel like you are in the fight. And it gives these fights this kinetic energy and we even get POV shots of like Conor McGregor or Jake Gyllenhaal punching at the camera and I'm like movie what the fuck did I do to you? The sound design for this movie is great. You can feel and hear every punch, kick and throw and again we need to start showing more love to fight choreographers. It does help that in tone, the movie doesn't take itself super seriously. It knows that it's a comedy. And like I said, there are moments of physical comedy in this movie, literal slapstick. And also it is nice to see some legitimate character development. Lucas Gage and Dominique Columbus have great smaller roles as people that actually aid Dalton out in helping with the roadhouse. And I enjoyed the pacing of this film. And Doug Liman is actually really good when it comes to pacing his movie. So the movie really didn't overstay its welcome. And I really did appreciate that. I do also have to note, I wonder if Amazon tried to get the rights for Metallica's Enter Sandman and either they said no or the price was too high. But listen to the music in the last fight and let me know if I'm crazy. Overall, Roadhouse was super surprising. Likeable characters, a good pace, genuinely funny comedy, great action, and for me, it did the one thing I ask of all movie remakes. It did its own thing. Roadhouse 2024 knew it could not do the same thing as Roadhouse 1989, and it was smart enough to approach the story from a new angle. The romance subplot I felt was unnecessary and Conor McGregor took me out a couple of times but other than that I had a good time at the movies. I would not have minded paying a matinee price to see this in theaters because it was shot so well. Yeah, I enjoyed this way more than I expected. This is a super hit. Now just because this movie exists it doesn't negate the 1989 original. If I'm feeling a little funky, I'll always just pop that in the player and enjoy. But honestly, yeah, this was way, way better than expected. What did you think of Roadhouse 2024? Share your thoughts, leave your comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can get notifications as well. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care.